For the Monday, December 21st, 2020 meeting of the Montpelier Design Review Committee, I will let committee members and staff introduce themselves. Martha Smirsky, member. Hannah Smith, member. Steve Everett, member. Meredith Crandall, staff. And I will let Meredith review the remote meeting procedures and process. Go ahead, Meredith. Sounds good. I'm going to do something a little different. Let's see if this will work. All right. Can everybody see that? Yes. All right. So this is mostly for people viewing over ORCA who are looking to figure out how to get onto the meeting. Um, and then also, so that's what the, the slide is up for. So you can access the Zoom meeting through this link. You can call in at this number here. Whoops, went backwards. Uh, let's see. There we go. Um, you can call in this number, and then you have your meeting ID and password. Um, and if you have problems accessing the meeting, please email me. I've got that open while I'm in the meeting. Um, I'll leave this up for a little bit. Um, so, uh, please note that if you're having difficulties while accessing the video conferencing features in Zoom, then you can message me through the chat function. Please keep that, those chats to those procedural, not, not procedural, but those tech, technology issues, because um, we'd like to keep everything viewable to the public if at all possible. Um, this Zoom, Zoom meeting is being recorded as well as streamed live via Orca Media. Turning on your video is optional. All public testimony will be taken verbally. <clears throat> Please keep your microphone on mute when you're not speaking to reduce background noise. Um, and if you call in via phone, you can use star six to mute or unmute if for some reason you don't have that mute button on your phone. Um, if you're interested in speaking on a particular matter, if you call in and didn't say you would like to speak previously, please raise your hand either physically if you're on your video or by using the raise hand button on your toolbar. If you're on the phone, you can press star nine to do that. Um, we do have two different uh, application representatives on. I don't see any other members of the public right now. Um, please make sure that you wait to be recognized by the chair before you speak. Um, and when you do, please provide your full name. Um, and if any members of the public come on, in addition to your full name, please make sure you include your address for the record. Um, in the event the public is unable to access this meeting, it will be continued to a time and place certain. And if you're having connectivity issues, try turning off your video or closing other applications on your phone or computer. And if you're having trouble seeing the document screen share, then um, all files are uploaded to this agendas and minutes page on the city website. Um, all right, I'm gonna hand this back over to the chair. Oh, please note that all votes taken during this meeting will be done by roll call. Alrighty, there you go. All you, Steve. Okay, I was just waiting for the screen to come back up. Do I hear a motion for approval? Can you hear me? Yep, so moved to approve the agenda. I second it. All in favor of approving the agenda, speak your names. Martha. Hannah. And Steve. So we can move forward to the first application for 623 Stonecutters Way for the Hunger Mountain Co-op. Is Kerry Bradley there? Yeah, good evening. Hi, Kari Bradley, I'm general manager of the co-op. Thank you for having me here tonight. Yes, go ahead and describe your application for us. Thank you. Yeah, so we're seeking to build a couple temporary walls um, outside as a wind block for our customers. Since April, we've been limiting the number of shoppers in the building at any one time. 
to uh, comply with the, I guess it would be recommended maximum occupancy limits by the state as an essential business. We're not actually bound to those occupancy limits, but we still see a safety benefit uh, to limiting the number of people in the building at once. And so with all the staff and the local vendors that we have here, we're currently limiting the number of uh, customers to 35. And that means that some folks are having to wait outside during the busiest times like today. And as the weather changes, we would like to provide them with some shelter. We've looked at various options and we're thinking something just very simple to protect from wind and I guess driving rain and snow. So um, if, you, if you have um, our sketch, we're looking to use the existing structure that's out there, post and beam structure um, that's open now to the right of the front door and uh, enclose that with some wood uh, paneling and batten that matches the exterior. That, so this would, that would be the, um, okay, so this is the, the sketch. Shows the two sides that we're looking to um, partially enclose uh, and on the east and north side. And um, then using plexiglass for windows. And then this, there would be an open doorway shown at the bottom for people to enter. So it's not a lot of protection, but we think it will help um, for people that are waiting outside. And it's all designed to be temporary uh, to get us through the winter months. That's kind of it. I'm happy to answer questions. Is the opening on the north elevation, the doorway, is there a door there or is it just an no. opening? No, we considered a doorway. We thought we'd leave it open just because we don't want people to have to navigate a door, op touching, opening a door. Um, so we'll leave that open. And again, it's pretty modest in terms of the shelter that it provides, but it'll be, I think, a lot better than nothing. If it, if you have an issue with wind coming through that opening, yeah, you could, you could do sort of a, a folding, a couple of panels, folding panels that would come away from the door and then turn back towards the towards the east elevation, which would shelter that from the, the northwest. Okay. And again, that, that would just be an option for you if, if this becomes a wind tunnel because of the opening. Sure. Yeah, that's good. Thank you. Again, it, it would act just like a, a, a freestanding screen that could fold out of the way. Great. Any other committee members have any comments, questions, suggestions regarding the, the, sh the windscreen? No. 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 No, we're good. Okay. The, the window openings, would they have plexiglass in them, fixed plexiglass? Yes, exactly. That's what we're thinking. Okay. Okay. If nobody has any other comments or suggestions, we can go through. There is a set of criteria. I'll go ahead and read through them. One for all projects, exterior design and materials of new construction or alterations of existing buildings should be consistent and compatible with the characteristics of the existing building. Additions to existing buildings shall respect to be compatible with the size, scale, materials, detailing, and overall character of the primary building and its environs. Additions shall not obscure or undermine the essential form and character of the original building. That's acceptable. Number two, existing buildings shall be recognized as a physical record of its time, place, and use. Changes that create a false sense of its new construction additions and all. There's several other criteria that are not applicable. 
And then there's one down below, which certainly is acceptable. Uh, development shall be designed to respect use of the state house dome. <laughs> it's not likely from there. Rhythm, visual patterns established by the alterations of solid walls and open, openings, windows and doors in the facade of a building shall create a rhythm. Proportional architectural detail, sense of rhythm and regular spacing of fenestrations shall be considered. Scale and massing shall present a variety in their composition. That's acceptable. And that was all the criteria. And what we can do is for an optional change, I'll just say a removable or hinged two panel screen can be created to protect the north elevation doorway. And again, compatible with the remaining design. And again, that's an option. You don't have to do it, but if you've if it turns out to be a bit of a wind tunnel, you can put that in for protection. All in favor of the application, speak your names. Martha, yes. Anna, yes. And Steve, yes. So the application is approved. Thank you. Have a good night. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much for coming before the committee and good luck with your project. And hopefully you can get it built while the weather's still this warm. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. happy solstice. Yes, bye-bye. Bye. Okay, good luck, thank you. Steve? Yes. I don't know if you know that you're going, you're coming in and out with your audio. I, I'm hearing the same thing with everyone else and I'm not sure why. Okay. You might it's need to just turn your video off. Okay. Okay, we'll try that and see if that's better. Is that better? So far. So far. <laughs> I'm, I'm not sure why it's breaking up that way. Yeah, we're getting a, a message that says that your bandwidth is low. I don't know what that means, but that's what it says. I'm not I'm not sure why, because I have I have very decent Wi-Fi here and I have had all day. I'm not sure why it's shrunk at this point. I'll do the best I can. Sure. This is better. Okay. We can go to the next application for the sign at 17 State Street, Green Light Real Estate. Is there someone from Greenlight who would like to review the application? Oh, you're both mu muted still. While John's figuring that out, I, I'm Ray Micus, owner of Greenlight Real Estate. John, John's going to speak the, the DRC language. Um, I was listening to some of the questions that Kari was being asked. I wasn't sure I'd be able to answer them. So I'm glad John's here. <laughs> John, I don't know if it'll work on the iPhone when you log in via Zoom, but try doing the star six on the phone and see if that unmutes you.
I don't know about the Apple um, interface. A lot of times down in the bottom left hand corner of the um, Zoom window, there is a little microphone button that lets you mute and unmute. Unfortunately, I can't un... Oh, yep, there you go. I think you're there, John. Oh, now you're muted again. I think you can talk, John. Maybe. Any luck with the audio? Um, I don't know. I mean, it looks like he's unmuted, but maybe there's an issue with accessing the iPhone microphone. Um, I can, so Ray, if you're comfortable with it, I can pull up the application package. Um, if you want to just talk about what the, the, the sign is in general, I think we can probably at least get through that. I'll do, I will do my best. Yes. Okay. Good. You're coming through. So I'm going to pull to there because I think that's probably the best thing to look at right now. Let me know if you want me to scroll to something else, Ray. Um, no, I think, I think that that does it. Um, uh, I don't exactly know how, how to, to, to describe it. John very eloquently relayed the artistic vision behind it. And, uh, I am one to defer to experts. So I, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, you know, tinker with it. Um, the, you know, the, what I can say, I mean, right now, the, the way that that band across the, the, the storefront level of that building, it's, it's not attractive. And I'm sure that the owners wouldn't disagree with that statement. Um, and so, you know, put, having, having a sign out there actually does make the building look better. Um, uh, it's, it's, it's a, that's a metal, it's a metal sign and there is some lighting to it. There's, there's power that just be accessible from the inside of the building punched through the, the facade. Um, I'm not sure what else. Well, I don't know what else to tell you. <laughs> so I have, John sent me another image. Let me pull that up. Um, that, here it is. Um, do, 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 do. Hold on. Um, because he and I had a conversation about the, the lighting for this. So this is going to be, can you see this email with this other image? Yes. Yeah. Um, so I had had some conversations with John Miller about whether what they were proposing was an internally illuminated sign or not. Um, and the fact is that it, it's not, it's, there's lighting behind these metal letters. So it's a halo effect. So it's not going to be really, um, going out so much because it's that more subtle green light behind it, just so that you can, can see it in the evening mm -hmm. hours, especially in the winter hours. Um, okay. but the, it's the, the letters themselves are going to be solid metal so that right. the light doesn't shine through them. Um, just so that all the DRC members know, cause I, I had a fairly long back and forth with John about that, um, to make sure that it wasn't something that was going to be completely barred by the design review regulations. What, what color lighting is being displayed? Is it, is the lighting white or green 
the the lighting is the lighting would be in green. Yeah. And would this lighting be there all the time? Um. It, you you're referring to like is it on during the daylight as well as after sun has set? Right. I I I don't know the answer to that my my first impression was that it would just be when the when it's dark not not during the daylight. But would it be all done all night? Is the intention to have it all throughout the evening? Um, it, I mean, it, it could be. I'm thinking of a, a similar sign across the street at Positive Pie. I don't know if there's is on all the time. I think that it is. Uh, well, it's not supposed to be. They're, they're, those lights are supposed to turn off once the business is closed. OK. So once business is shut down, lights are supposed to be turned off. That's some part of the regulations. So the back, the backer for the lettering is the clear frosted Lexan. I, Hold on. I, 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 I don't know. Um, these are the, these are details that I'm sure John will be able to easily answer. It's that's what's here in this application. Yes. And that's my understanding as well. Um, I don't. I don't the, know what coloring time. is coming. The coloring is coming from the the lighting LED lighting itself, rather than any background. Correct. That's my understanding as well. Is that coloring changeable, or is that coloring fixed? I assumed yeah. that that coloring was fixed. I didn't have any intention of changing it. I was just wondering if it was going to be sort of a a bright neonish green, or if it was a more subtle green that blended with the with the it's facade. Not, no, it, it, it would be more subtle. It's not going to be bright neon green. That's that's not the look we're going for. Okay, good. It was hard to tell from the from the mock-up. Do any committee members have any comments, questions, or suggestions? Now, I, I have some problem if this is intended to be on all the time. As, as Meredith pointed out, I think that it would need to be shut off when the business is, is closed. Yeah, there's, there's regulatory limits on the lighting. Um, and so if, if the committee feels like we need to, we can make that clear. Um, as a condition of the permit, just so that it's right up front. I, I think that that would make me more comfortable. Okay. It would just echo it only, in the regulation. It would only be on during the dark and when the business is in business or is open for business. And I would also request, if possible, that a dimmer switch be placed on it so the level of lighting can be controlled. Again, if that's possible. I, yeah, I mean, I, I would assume that in today's day that LED, dimmable LEDs, yeah, I know dimmable LEDs exist. We have them in our house. Yes, that's, that's pretty common. Okay, so again, it sounds like the condi only conditions would be that the lighting would only be on when it's dark and when the business is open. And then again, the second suggestion would be that the light control be on a dimmable control so that the light levels can be controlled as needed. Does that sound okay for the committee members? It it does. Yes. Okay. And based on that, I can again 
Hannah, did you have anything to add? No, nothing to add. Okay, then I can go through the criteria again for this project. For all projects, exterior design and materials of new construction or alteration shall be consistent and compatible with the characteristics of the existing building and other properties in the district. Additions shall be comparable, compatible with the size, scale, materials, detailing, and overall character of the primary building. Additions shall not obscure or undermine the essential form and character of the building. It's, those are acceptable. Existing buildings shall be recognized as a physical record of time, place, and use. Any changes that create a false sense of historical development, such as adding conjectural features or architectural elements from an old other buildings shall not be undertaken. New construction alterations and additions shall be of their own time. That's acceptable. Signage. When removing a sign, evidence of the sign's installation must be removed to the greatest extent practicable, which I'm assuming would be the case here with the original sign. So any, any penetrations into the facade that are holding the original built sign on would be patched before the new sign would be placed. Outdoor lighting fixtures, the structural design of outdoor lighting fixtures shall be compatible with the architectural design and function of the building and compatible with the neighborhood. With the conditions, that's acceptable. And then there is a specific set of criteria for signs. Size, location, design, color, texture, lighting, and materials of exterior designs shall be compatible with the building and structures on the site and surrounding properties, acceptable. Signing shall respect the original sign placement and sign bands and historic structures, acceptable. If a building has multiple tenants, there'll be consistency in placement and size among all signs, acceptable. It's recommended that sign placement be centered over build building entries, or in this case, it's centered over a window and with the columns, that's acceptable. Sign installations shall minimize damage to, to character defining materials on the building, acceptable. Any fasteners, is the, wood, is the facade of that wood frame or is that any masonry? I think, I think it's actually, it, 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 it looks like it's metal to me. Okay. The, this one criteria refers to mortar joints in masonry buildings, so that's not applicable here. Sign design color and typography shall respect historic precedents where appropriate, and that's acceptable. Sign support structures shall be compatible with the building architecture and must not be overly complex or dominant. That's acceptable. Lighting fixtures for signs on facades shall not conflict with or damage the building's architectural integrity. That's acceptable. Lighting fixtures for signs mounted on all building facades shall be designed with appropriate housing shielding photometrics to ensure there is appropriate lighting levels and illumination that focuses on the sign panels exclusively. And again, that would be acceptable with a dimmer control. And again, based on the lighting being on during darkness and during business hours and a dimmer control based on those two additions to the, to the criteria, do I hear approval by the committee members by speaking your names? Um, this is Martha. I approve with the conditions. Hannah says yes. Hannah, did you approve? Yes, Hannah approves. Okay, and Steve approves. So it's accepted, application is accepted with the two conditions and Thank you very much.
Thank, thank you. Thanks for your time tonight, and thanks for bearing with our technical difficulties. <laughs> I appreciate it. Thank you, okay. Ray. Have, have thanks a good evening. for pursuing them. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Good luck with your project. <laughs> thank you. Have a good evening. You too. And I'm not sure if we have enough. Do we have enough members for the minutes? We do. Okay. Okay. I'll make a motion to accept the minutes as, as written. Okay. Do I hear a second? I will second that. Okay. All in favor of approving the minutes, speak your names. Sis Martha, I say yes. Hannah says yes. And Steve says yes. So the minutes are approved. Does anyone have any other business? Not for me. Nope. Nothing there here. Okay. Then do I hear a motion to adjourn? I move that we adjourn. I'll second that. All in favor, speak your names. Martha. Hannah. And Steve. So the meeting is adjourned, and we'll see you again on January the 4th. Yes. Happy Merry Christmas to you both. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. Happy Solstice. Happy Hanukkah. Yes. <laughs> Happy holidays. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye. Thank you. Take care. Bye. Thank you.